Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Pipe and Tubing. Topic number 16, Lecture Discussion. Programmable Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Equipment. Objective, to develop a basic understanding of the components and controls for programmed gas tungsten arc welding equipment used to weld pipe and tubing. The demand for higher production rates and improved weld quality has resulted in a greater interest in programmable automatic gas tungsten arc welding equipment. With manual equipment, it is the welder who controls the feed of filler metal provides travel along the length of the joint, tracks the joint, and maintains the arc. For programmable automatic equipment, the operator only needs to monitor the welding operation. The equipment now maintains the arc, feeds the filler metal, provides travel, and may also track the joint. Since the welding equipment coordinates all of these activities, Additional controls and specialized equipment are required for the welding operation. A complete automatic pipe and tube welding system could include a power source with an interchangeable control panel, a motor speed control, a remote control system, and a tube-to-tube -tube welding head. When a welder deposits a weld manually, Corrections for misalignment and heat buildup in the weldment can be made by changing travel speed or modifying technique in some other way. When welding with automatic equipment, the flexibility of the system is reduced since the welding equipment controls the operation. Because of this, the programmer must be able to modify welding current to compensate for changes in welding conditions as they occur. Programmers for automatic gas tungsten arc equipment are equipped with a hot start control and usually pulsed weld current. Other types of current controls can include initial current, upslope, welding current, weld taper, downslope, and final current. To explain how these various current controls affect the weld puddle, we will go through a simple procedure on pipe. When the arc is started, the current goes to the initial current, which is a minimum value relative to the welding current. The current then begins to upslope to weld current. This allows the current to increase gradually, producing a certain amount of preheating. Once the weld current is attained, welding begins as the torch begins its travel along the joint. As welding progresses, heat begins to build up in the pipe. Normally, the welder would have to increase his travel speed to reduce the heat input. On automatic equipment, however, the programmer panel may feature weld taper control well, this takes the place of the manual welder when heat builds up. Once the weld has been completed, downslope begins. Downslope gradually decreases the current from the tapered current value to the final current. This method produces the same result as cratering out with the manual method. This reduces the possibility of crater cracks. The current is normally allowed to flow for a short time at final current to allow post heating to take place. The shielding gas post purge is allowed to flow for a short time after the arc is extinguished to prevent oxidation of the weld bead and to protect the tungsten. 35 seconds is usually suitable for most metals. On many programmers, pulsed current is available for additional control of the welding current. Pulsed current allows the current to fluctuate from a high level, which provides penetration, to a low level, which allows the weld to cool slightly. This type of current 
provides complete penetration without an excessive buildup of heat in the weld zone. The weld actually appears like a series of overlapping spot welds. Pulsed current can be used throughout the weld cycle from initial current to final. For upslope and downslope, its use is optional. The interface control, which is also called the motor speed control, provides control of the wire feed speed, welding head rotation speed, remote amperage control, and weld time. The motor speed control controls the movement of the torch head around the sections of the pipe being joined. The speed of the torch depends on the size of the pipe or tube sections and the welding procedure variables. The rotation of the welding head is usually delayed at the beginning of the weld cycle until the formation of the puddle. The welding head travel can be set to run continuously around the joint in a smooth manner or when using pulsed current the head may be allowed to move in short increments during the high or low pulse. The motor speed control also allows for feeding of the filler metal to the arc. This is called cold filler wire addition since the wire does not carry electrical current. The wire feed speed is adjusted according to the welding procedure variables. Like the control for fixture rotation, the wire feed does not start until the puddle is established. The wire feed is usually stopped during the downslope portion of the weld cycle. The major consideration here is to prevent the addition of filler metal to a cold puddle. The wire feed may be continuous, similar to a manual lay wire technique, or intermittent, similar to a dip technique. The intermittent technique is normally used with pulsed current to apply filler metal during the high or the low pulse. The motor speed control can also regulate the weld current initiation of downslope, and the time for the weld cycle. A pendant is used for remote control of the weld cycle. The pendant is capable of starting and stopping the weld cycle. It can also be used to start the downslope portion of the cycle. The pendant may also be equipped with a control to inch the welding head to the desired position. and a similar inching button for the wire feed. This is especially useful when installing a new spool of wire. The automatic pipe and tube head actually produces the weld based on commands received from the programmer and the motor speed control. Basically, a set of jaws located within the head are used to hold the head in position on the joint. The welding head opens like a hinge to wrap around the pipe joint. Locking screws are used to hold the two halves together, forming a single unit on the pipe. When the weld current is established, the torch rotates around the joint in order to produce the weld. Normally, in the 5G position, the torch is located at 12 o'clock and then rotates clockwise around the joint when looking at the torch side of the head. The head rotates to the 9 o'clock position at welding current. At 9 o'clock, the current tapers down to compensate for heat buildup in the pipe as the welding continues to 12 o'clock to complete the weld. The automatic pipe and tube welding head is capable of producing welds in a wide range of pipe and tube sizes. Various sizes of heads are capable of producing welds on pipe with wall thicknesses of 15 thousandths inch and up in a range of diameters from one quarter inch to approximately six inches. The automatic process is capable of producing many of the various types of groove welds provided that a good fit up is achieved to produce consistent weld quality. With a special adapter, socket welds can also be produced with the automatic process. 
Another form of automatic gas tungsten arc equipment is used to join tubes to a plate, which is sometimes called a bulkhead. The welding head is sometimes referred to as a tube-to-tube -tube sheet welding head. A collapsible mandrel is placed on the mandrel holder, which is attached to the head. Then the mandrel is placed within the tube and the body of the torch is placed in contact with the sheet on which the tube is to be joined. The weld start button is pressed and the weld cycle begins with pre-purge and arc initiation. When welding current is established, the orbital head located within the assembly begins to rotate around the joint. Filler metal may or may not be used depending on the welding procedure. If filler metal is used, it is supplied continuously from a wire spool. Three types of joints are commonly welded with this type of head. Tube extended outside the sheet, tube flush with the sheet, and tube recessed within the sheet. The type of joint depends on weld size, accessibility, and outside surface contour requirements. The tube to tube sheet welding head can be used on tubes with an approximate range of from 5 8 inch to 4 inch outside diameter. This process is commonly used to fabricate heat exchangers, condenser tubes, nuclear piping systems, chemical processing equipment, and pressure vessels. A variation of the tube-to-tube -tube sheet welding system produces inside diameter welds. These are especially useful for producing welds on box headers.